The solar energy market was reported to be a $170 billion industry in 2020. This figure is the capital expenditure part. In other words, how much money was being spent on solar panels and their installation and supporting parts. The solar energy production market is around a $50 billion industry, or at least in 2020 it was. This relates to the total value of the electricity produced. It is difficult to calculate this number because only around a third of all solar panels produced are sold into the utility space. The rest are destined for residential and corporate usage. Now, depending on which analyst you believe, solar energy production is forecasted to grow anything from a relatively kind of anemic rate of about 7% all the way up to 20% compound annual growth rate by 2026. I find this lack of consensus on its future interesting, because I don't think anyone really has a true understanding of how fast this industry could potentially grow. There are a lot of skeptics out there on the role of solar in the grid energy mix, and I put this down to largely the outdated belief in solar power's major limitation, that is, that it is only capable of operating during the day. Now, I don't share the skepticism, because I believe that most analysts and industry experts are not taking into consideration the true nature of disruption in the industry. You see, disruption is hardly ever attributed to a single technology. The iPhone would not have made its impact without the advent of broadband internet. And the automobile would not have displaced a thousand-year-old horse and carriage industry without help from its dirty big brother, the rise of the oil industry. In the case of solar energy, we are now just not just talking about replacing a coal power plant with a solar farm. That is just substitution. Nuclear power didn't disrupt coal power production, it just displaced it. But we still generate electricity through large power stations. We still transported it over high power transmission lines, and we still purchased it and consumed it in the same fashion. With solar panels, we can really truly say, this time, it is different. Now, I mentioned that true disruption happens because of the convergence of disruptive technologies. And while solar panel cost reduction and performance have dramatically improved over the years, the real break for solar power has come as a result of the technology advances in these guys. Batteries. Battery cost per kilowatt hour has dropped dramatically, and we have a corresponding gain in energy densities. This has made grid-scale battery packs feasible for the first time in history. The first industry to feel the effects of battery disruption is the peaker power plants. Base load power supplied to the grid is usually very reliable constant power source. What base load is not very good at doing is catering for peak loads. That, that's the time of the day when you and I get back from work and need to power up the AC or put our dinners in the oven. Base load power stations just don't come with a power up button to crank up the output. It takes several hours to get them fully operational. Instead, most cities will build peaker power stations, usually using gas power generators that are more expensive to run, but they're a lot more flexible because they can get going in around 30 minutes or less. Now, grid-scale battery packs are an attractive alternative. Not only do they not pollute, but their input costs are lower. They draw on grid power when demand is low, and usually the rate of charge is lower too, and they dispatch when they need it but they're not completely without input cost because the municipality still has to buy the power that went into the battery. Unless, of course, they build, you guessed it, a solar farm. Now their input costs are zero. But if they're building the solar farm to cater for peak demand, how hard would it be for them to build a solar farm to cater for all their demand? At this point, we're really just dealing with a question of scale, right? Granted, there's still some issues in the winter when solar generation is hampered, but there's additional renewable technologies that can offset this, like wind, for example, which I will not cover here. Batteries have one other benefit, and that is the speed at which they can release electricity. A peaker plant still has to be fired up. As I said, it takes about half an hour, but a battery can dispatch electricity almost instantaneously. And this brings me to another of the converging technologies that is paving the way for solar adoption, and that is artificial intelligence. Solar panels can scale down to a single panel on a residential rooftop, and the corresponding residential battery is typically between 5 to 10 kilowatt hours of storage. This is enough to relieve a substantial amount of demand of the grid, but is also capable of supplying the grid. The concept of a virtual power plant is being promoted by Tesla, 
and it works on the principle that residential solar and battery systems can all work together as a sort of interconnected but distributed power source. In order to empower something like this, some sophisticated artificial intelligence is needed to predict demand, usage patterns, and to assess how much power is needed at a certain time, how much a participating Powerwall owner needs, and how much to purchase from them. This type of demand forecasted energy management is needed at the municipal level too, because with accurate demand forecasting and usage modeling, power surges destroying distribution boxes can become a thing of the past. The last convergence thread I wanted to touch on is the huge increase in demand for electricity, largely thanks to the rapid growth in these guys. Battery electric vehicles are displacing primary energy source, oil, by switching over to a secondary one, electricity. This is a huge energy demand on the grid, and it is growing rapidly. Now, why is this disruptive? Because it is placing strain on existing grids and growing at a rapid pace. It takes years to build a nuclear power or a coal power plant. It only takes months to build a solar farm, and it can be built in phases, starting with a single solar panel if ne necessary. In fact, the distributed nature of solar means that you might not even need a solar farm. A forward-thinking municipality could encourage residents to build their own solar energy systems, thereby alleviating the grid demand and possibly even supplying the municipality. Now let's have another look at the future of solar, shall we? Currently, solar energy contributes around 2.7% of global grid energy production. That is a minute number in a very large $1 trillion industry. It has an enormous amount of room to grow, and as long as battery industry is there to support it, it has a large role to play in our energy makeup in the future. I hope this helps. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my regular posts.